Right everyone, it is Finn here, and of course, welcome back to my channel as usual, where today I'm going to be giving you my vote for my FIFA 22 Team of the Year, because ladies and gentlemen, it is finally that time of the year, where you wait for releases, their nominees, and you have to narrow it down to your Team of the Year. Now of course, 80 nominees, we have to cut them down to our best possible starting 11, made out of the best players from over the last calendar year. Now of course, as I said, this is just going to be my vote, in terms who, of who I think was the best player in each position, if you guys want to do your vote as well i'll leave a link to this website in the description down below so if you want to join the fun make sure that you join with that but of course looking at the starting 11 we'll be able to choose from the best goalkeepers from the past year the best defenders the best midfielders and the best attackers now of course we've had some brilliant players from over the last 365 days so it's not going to be an easy task and i'm definitely not going to make everyone happy but i'm definitely going to give it my best shot and of course talking about fifa Especially, I want to ask you guys if you guys want me to post more regular FIFA content on this channel, whether it be Ultimate Team, Foot Draft, stuff like that. If you guys do want to do that, I will post a voting poll on my YouTube community tab. It should be there already by the time this video goes out. So if you would like me to post some FIFA content, make sure to head that way and hit that vote if you want me to make FIFA content. But looking at my Team of the Year vote, of course, I think we're going to start off with the goalkeepers. Now we have the likes of Courtois. We've got Donnarumma, Edison, Magnon, we've got Martinez and Mendy. Now, of course, I feel like the two biggest ones that I have to look at is going to be the likes of Donnarumma for what he did with Italy. He made a big move to PSG, but I am going to have to go for the likes of Eduard Mendy. How do I do this? Do I just slot him into that team? Okay, there we go. Eduard Mendy, the first player in my team. I think moving to Chelsea as a goalkeeper, he has been phenomenal. Got eight clean sheets in 20 Premier League games so far this season. Four out of five Champions League uh, clean sheets, obviously, is just a brilliant goalkeeper overall. UEFA men's best goalkeeper of the year. I feel like there's going to be a lot of bias towards Donnarumma because of the Euros and how well he performed there. And I just don't want to be unfair to players who play, for instance, for an African nation. Obviously, Mendy, there were no African competitions last year. So I feel like that's a bit unfair to him. And I genuinely do think that Mendy had an outstanding year. Obviously, won the Champions League. You have to give him credit. What an incredible year to the Senegalese goalkeeper. Obviously, moving on to the defenders. Now, there is a long list of really, really good defenders here. How do I scroll? Um, yeah, as you guys can see, from Alaba all the way, there are a lot of defenders. Now, of course, I think the trickiest position might be the right-back position. Um, obviously, we've got the likes of Trent Alexander-Arnold. We've got the likes of Azpilicueta. We've got the likes of Hakimi. There is a Rhys James, right? There's... Wait, is there is there no Rhys James? That's shocking. Obviously, Concello can also play in that position. Wait, you're, you're not telling me that there's... Wait, is there no Rhys James? Oh, I can't believe it. Rhys James is my best right back of the year. I genuinely can't believe that. I am shocked. I genuinely think Rhys James has been the best right back in the world. I mean, he's been brilliant for Chelsea, won the Champions League. I think when he plays overall is the difference maker. So I can't believe that he's not in the team of the year. I think that's absolutely shocking, to be honest. Um, do I think Trent Alexander, or did I think that Trent Alexander-Arnold had a brilliant year? Not, necessary, uh, not necessarily, but I do think maybe out of these right backs, I am going to put him there. Um, as I said, it's it's going to be slightly tricky. I don't know. I'm very I'm feeling very weird that Reese James wasn't in there, especially because as Pelaqueta is there. Now, don't get me wrong, he had a brilliant year with Chelsea and with Spain, but I definitely, definitely think that Reese James should have gotten that position on the left back side. Although traditionally a right back, Zhao Concello, what a player. This man has been for Manchester City this season. Obviously, Portugal didn't have a brilliant Euros. But Jao Concello, I would say, may be one of the best fullbacks in the world and has been the best left-back, although traditionally a right-back. It is very close between him and Luke Shaw, in my opinion. I thought Luke Shaw had a brilliant 2021. But if you look at this half of the year, at the end part of 2021, wasn't that brilliant? And you do have to deduct points from uh, him at the end of the day because of that. Now, in terms of my centre-backs, once again... Absolutely brilliant player. I know lots of people are going to want to put Benucci there, but I am going to have to put Chiellini. Now, is there another centre-back I would put there, or am I going to put Benucci there with him? Uh, obviously, his Italian partner. Is there another centre-back I would go for? Um, you know what? I'm going to go for the likes of... Let's put Ruben Diaz there. 
obviously was uh, the Premier League player of the season. Once again, a very solid centre-back option, really made a name for himself this season. Um, and can we talk about the fact that Kieran Trippier is in the Team of the Year nominee? Obviously a brilliant player for England, I thought he did really well at the Euros, won the La Liga title with Atletico Madrid, but he has to be the first Newcastle United player to ever be within the Team of the Year nominees. That is so funny to look at actually, but um, yeah, as I said, in terms of defence, I don't know if there are any other defenders in there. I mean, I wouldn't be too offended if someone put the likes of someone like Marquinhos in there. Kier obviously had a really good year. Um, obviously, as I said, I understand putting Benucci in there over Ruben Diaz. But at the end of the day, I'm quite happy with that defense. I think it looks really, really good. Uh, looking at my midfield options, obviously, I think Barella had a very, very good year. I'm not going to lie. I'm a Manchester United fan. If you've watched my channel for a while, you'll know this. But I don't think Bruno Fernandes had a brilliant 2021 whatsoever. In fact, it's probably towards the start of 2021 where he started having bad performances. And because of that, I don't think I'm going to guarantee him a spot in my team. I think Kevin De Bruyne um, might deserve a spot. Once again, guys, this is early stages. I can always just um, move things around as I go. Um, I think he had a really good season with Manchester City, did struggle with injuries. I think Barella, heavily underrated. I think he could definitely end up going in the team. Once again, I'm probably going to end up moving things around. How do I put him in my team and scroll up at the same time? Um, yeah, I think Barella, in the meantime, at least deserves to be, obviously, won the title with Inter Milan, did really well with Italy at the Euros, did struggle with game time a tiny bit, obviously Fabinho, brilliant player, Foden definitely deserves a shout, I think Jorginho, what he did, obviously deserves a shout, I think I might actually end up putting him over Barella, obviously Jorginho won the Euros and the Champions League, that is a major shout, um, obviously lots of people were tipping him to be in the top three of the Ballon d'Or, I think defensive midfield wise, it has to be N'Golo Kante, man of the match in the semi-finals and pretty much the final of the Champions League, what a great defensive midfielder, and there's absolutely no one in this world who doesn't like good old N'Golo Kante, so am I happy with that midfield, um, I don't know, I think once again, Looking at the players, um, do I classify Hyungman Son as... Oh, I didn't even realize Declan Rice is there. Obviously, Pedri, the golden boy. Obviously, guys, this is team of the year. You are going to get the best players in the world. I think Mason Mount is a really good shout as well. As I said, there are a lot of really, really good midfielders. Like, Atelier had a really good year. Um, am I happy with that? I don't know. I think I'm more or less happy with that. I wouldn't argue if you put someone like Barella over Kevin De Bruyne. Um, but at the end of the day, I think I'm relatively happy with that. As you guys can see, very Premier League heavy so far. But they have these are players that did perform really, really well. Not too sure why Luka Modric isn't there. He didn't do too much this year. Obviously, heading into the attackers. Now, this is where, once again, could be controversial. Um, as you guys know, uh, once again, I am a Manchester United fan. But I just can't see any reason to put Cristiano Ronaldo in the squad. And I'm also not going to be one of those people who form my team of the year, puts players in random positions that they don't fit into. No, you're either left back, centre back, right back. You play in the position you play in. Ronaldo is no longer a winger. He is a striker. So if he's not the best striker in the world, I'm not going to make changes to somehow try to fit him in my squad. Obviously, I do think that the best striker in the world uh, for over the last year has to be... Ooh, I've totally zoned out of the screen get back to the attackers I totally think that the best striker from over the last year has to be Robert Lewandowski obviously an absolutely massive goal machine had more goals in games in 2021 as I said an absolutely criminally underrated player the fact that he did not win the Ballon d'Or uh, two years ago obviously criminal even Lionel Messi admitted in 2021 that Robert deserved at least one I do think Lukaku is a good shout. I do think Kane is a good shout, but he kind of fell off towards the end of the year. There are a lot of really good options. Um, obviously, in terms of the attack, do I go for Lionel Messi? I'm going to go for Lionel Messi. Once again, although it hasn't been brilliant so far for PSG, won the Copa America. That was obviously a big shout for him. His numbers for Barcelona, absolutely massive. By far the best player in the league. I think even though he only played for the first few months of 2021 for Barcelona, he still ended 2021 as their top goal scorer and assist maker, which is really scary for Barcelona. Um, obviously in the left wing position, I just realized I haven't put Mo Salah in this team. Actually, now that I think about it, do I? Oh, no, but I can't go against what I've just said, can I? I can't just go against what I just said in terms of playing players in the wrong position. I don't know. I feel like Mo Salah has to get into this team somehow. 
Am I going to contradict what I just said? Well, who are my other left-wing options? Um, obviously, Benzema plays as a striker. I do think he deserves a shout. Chiesa, brilliant. Yeah, Ronaldo, once again, good. All of these players are good. They're in the squad for a reason. Obviously, Insigne now playing for Toronto in the MLS. So, I don't know. This might be the only exception I've got in this entire team. I know I'm going against what I just said, but I have to put Mo Salah in this team, especially because, I, I don't know, there aren't really any good left-wing options. Uh, let me just be able to scroll up here. I think Mo Salah, they somehow have to do it. Obviously, you always get in every team of the year, every single year, there's always some player playing in a random position. But once again, Mo Salah, I would put him, if I had to choose between Messi and Salah, I might have to choose Salah over Messi. Once again, his numbers are insane. Top goal scorer and assist maker in the Premier League at the moment. And we're only halfway through the season. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is my FIFA 22 team of the year. I hope you guys more or less agree with it. I think it is an insanely strong squad. As I said, I think it's so, so weird that Reese James wasn't an option to put in. But at the end of the day, that is still a very, very good squad. And I want to hear from you guys what your squads would be down below. As I said, make sure to go to my community tab on my page to vote if you guys want to see more FIFA content in the future. But I am very happy with that. You know what? I am going to submit that team. What a team it has been for 2021. Do I want to download the image? Sure, I don't really care. But guys, I hope you have enjoyed this video. Of course, I've been doing a lot of AFCON content. As of late, you guys seem to be enjoying it. That's why I've still got that AFCON sign in the background. I'm not going to change it just for this video. Um, but yeah, of course, guys, let me know also in terms of future content, what you guys would like to see. Would you guys like to see mostly Premier League content? What other content would you like to see? But as I said, if you guys are new to my channel, make sure to subscribe down below. I'd love to hit 3,000 subscribers within the next two, three weeks. I think we could definitely achieve it the channel's been growing really well as of late leave a like down below if you enjoyed the video but guys this has been fun fy double n this is my team of the year